morning. Welcome as we do come together for worship this day as we continue to see the ways in which God meets us in the midst of our lives every day. We do continue to pray for all those uh, that are listed in your bulletin. There are a few, a few new names um, there from last week's feed, um, and they're also included on our prayer uh, cloth for today. Uh, in addition to that, um, a couple of names didn't make the, um, the list. Steve Bradley, Joan Bradley's husband, is in the hospital right now with some fluids around his heart, uh, and they've not been able to kind of clear that up. So please do keep him in your prayers. And also for Alan Riley, who is my cousin's husband, um, who had bypass surgery this week. So if you would keep Steve and Alan in your prayers uh, this morning. Are there any others that we would like to have lifted up this morning? Corey. And always for those who are online uh, to please uh, lift up if you have other prayers that you would like to have included uh, in folks' prayers to please do that there as well. Um, I invite you now to stand as we begin our worship as we come together in God's presence. Sometimes life takes us where we don't expect. Sometimes God takes us where we don't expect. In worship, we gather to get in touch with God's bigger narrative. In worship, we gather to expand our hearts. So let us worship the God of unending surprises. Let us worship the God of love. And so we humbly pause in God's presence to lift up those ways that we are bound by sin, those times from this past week where we have needed God's forgiveness and grace. Creator God, being faithful has never been easy. You asked Noah to build a ship. You asked the Israelites to plant gardens and build homes while in exile. You asked the prophets to speak challenging truths. You asked the disciples to drop their nets and follow you. And you asked us to love bigger than society wants. Being faithful has never been easy. And as a result, we often miss the mark. Forgive us for holding tightly to human-made plans. Forgive us for the times we say no to you so that we can say yes to ourselves. Unravel the grip we have on our own agenda so that we can make room for you. Gratefully we pray. God, beyond all expectations, revealed the fullness of his love and grace on the cross and through the empty tomb. Jesus Christ gave all for us that we might have the fullness of life that God has given us. May God's mercy and grace be woven into our lives as we receive the entire forgiveness of all our sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We join now in reciting the words of uh, our first hymn. Lord, keep us steadfast in your word. Would wrest the kingdom from your son. Lord Jesus Christ, your power make known. Defend your holy church that we.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. God of hope, how often have we found ourselves in exile, separated from your presence. Restore us and let us find you when we seek you. Shed your grace upon us, given through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from Jeremiah. These are the words of the letter that the prophet Jeremiah sent from Jerusalem to the remaining elders among the exiles, and to the priests, the prophets, and all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had taken into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. This was after King Jeconia, Jeconia, Jeconia uh, and the Queen Mother, the court officials, the leaders of Judah and Jerusalem, the artisans and the smiths had departed from Jerusalem. The letter was sent by the hand of Elisa, son of Shaphan and Jeremiah, son of Jedekiah, whom King Jedekiah of, Jeru of Judah had sent to Babylon to King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. It said, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and live in them. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Take wives and have sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage, that they may bear sons and daughters. Multiply there and do not decrease. But seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile, and pray to the Lord on its behalf, for in its welfare you will find your welfare. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, do not let the prophets and the diviners who are among you deceive you, and do not listen to the dreams that they dream, for it is a lie that they are prophesying to you in my name. I did not send them, says the Lord. For thus says the Lord, only when Babylon's 70 years are completed will I visit you, and I will fulfill to you my promise and bring you back to this place. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. Then when you call upon me and come and pray to me, I will hear you. When you search for me, you will find me. If you seek me with all your heart, I will let you find me, says the Lord, and I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations and all the places where I have driven you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back to the place from which I sent you into exile. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the word of life. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. So I say to you, ask and it will be given you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be open for you. For everyone who rece asks receives, and everyone who searches finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there any among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if a child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ and the Holy Spirit. I was talking not that long ago to someone uh, about um, when I was in seminary, I, had to, I went and lived with my grandparents for a summer. Uh, it was a part of my training. I had to work in a hospital, and so that just worked out that I was in Austin uh, for the summer. And I drove down myself uh, all the way from New York to Texas over the course of about four days. And, you know, your first car that has no air conditioning, <laughs> power, nothing, you know, those kinds of cars that were much more than a, a, a bucket of bolts uh, kind of thing. But as I was thinking about it, I was astonished to think, well, first of all, that I'd, I made phone calls before I went so that I would have places to stay. So I knew exactly what my, where I was going to stay each day. And nowadays, I would probably not have done that if I would have stopped along the way and made reservations on my phone, right? 
And even with that, I would be able to, my parents or my mom would be able to tell where I was nowadays because we have what we affectionately call the stalker app. So um, <laughs> my mom knows where I am and I know where, where she is. Uh, but what, even that, I would have just a phone call if I, you know, I had a, a flat tire along the way and I had to wait for someone to, uh, to, help, to help me do that. And nowadays, it would have just been a phone call from your car. And back then, <laughs> 30 some odd years, about 30 years ago, we didn't have cell phones. Or if somebody had a cell phone, it was not the one, the yeah. small ones that you have. It was probably a big one or attached to the car in some way. Of all those things that we now take for granted, that are so much a part of people's lives now, of things we can do that even, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago were inconceivable. We're, we are living in the age of the Jetsons, are we not? We just don't have the flying cars yet. Uh, but who knows, maybe soon. We take a lot for granted until now, right? We take a lot for granted of things that we can do or even people that we can see or that we can even hug or shake hands with. I, someone, uh, I had some folks come to my house to look at some things to be auctioned off and one woman reached out her hand and I'm like, oh, I can't, I don't wanna take that chance. Not just for me, but if I were to get anything. Despite the fact they were then going to spend the whole day in my house. That's a whole other issue. But all those things that we take for granted, though, that normal life that we so long to go back to, and if we could just flip that switch again. Now, we don't know what it's going to be like, even when they do get a vaccine, of what kinds of precautions or what life will look like, of whether it will just go back to before but we're called to live into the midst of this time. To not just wait for the normal, whatever that is, to return. That's what Jeremiah is passing on to the people of Israel at this point. At this point, Israel uh, was in the midst of one of its exiles. They were often captured. Their land is very critical for, for passageway. It's right on the Mediterranean, and, uh, and, and, and folks can come and you know, can have a good, it's a good place between kingdoms. And so once again, they are captured this time by the Babylonians, and they are sent into exile to Babylon, or most of them are, not all of them, but mainly the leaders, the king, all the, the people who had lots of money were all shipped out into exile. And despite the fact that some other prophets were saying, don't worry, you'll be back soon, Jeremiah's like, yeah, no, it's not gonna be soon. In fact, he goes as far as to say, it's gonna be 70 years. Now, by the time all this is written down, they probably knew that it was gonna be 70 years. But still he's saying, it's not gonna be right away. Settle in, plant gardens have children, have grandchildren, this is going to be a few generations that you're going to be in exile, that you're going to need to live in the midst of that. Now, hopefully it's not going to be 70 years for this, but the message holds true. To live into the midst of this, of whatever kind of exile we're feeling right now because it does I was struck with that as I start reading this it's like okay this is exile yeah we're in exile sometimes in our own homes sometimes just from being able to do the things we want can we even go anywhere on vacation if so what risks do we take we're in exile but what God says through Jeremiah is seek the welfare of the place where you are are situated and he says, surely I know the plans I have for you, plans for your welfare and not for harm. Now, welfare is one of those words that really, it really should be translated differently here because it doesn't really get to the fullness of what Jeremiah is talking about here. If you see the word that's used there, it's not that we often, it's been translated as welfare, which kind of gets at it, but it's really shalom, is peace. And not just the peace, the absence of war, or the absence of violence, or just that feeling of, oh, everything's okay. But that sense of shalom, which is the sense of wholeness or fullness, or everything that God intends our lives and our world to be, to seek that wholeness in the midst of where you are in exile. 
that God only wants the best for us. Surely I know the plans for, I have for you, plans for your peace, your wholeness, not for harm. That God never intends harm for us. The exile, yes, it could be read as God's punishment, but more often than not, usually what looks like punishment is just the consequences of our own actions. The Israelites had made alliances with other countries that put them in harm's way and did not put their trust in God. And God's not so much punishing them, but saying, you know what, if that's what you want, here you go. That's not gonna lead to your welfare, to your peace. But God promises peace, wholeness, all that God wants for us in this life and for our world is what God desires. And saying my benediction at the end that may you live into life of God, that live the life that God has given you to the fullest. The fullness of God's life is one of love and of grace. And that Jesus came into the midst of this to show us what God wants to give us. Would any among us give our child a scorpion or something else instead of a fish? or something to provide for their welfare, for their good, for their wholeness, for their peace. No, God only gives the best, only gives that which gives life, not takes it away. That's what God wants for us. And that even in God giving us his son, that he's giving us the fullness of that love, and even when it looks like it's taken away by the cross, it is still there that we receive the fullness of life. We receive the fullness of God's love and grace. We receive all that God wants for us now and always. Surely I know the plans I have for you, plans for your welfare and not for harm, plans for your peace, for your wholeness, that that's what God desires for us. And that God calls us to work for the welfare of others, even in the midst of exile, because in doing, bringing the fullness of life to others, we receive the fullness of life ourselves. That we're in this interdependent relationship with those around us and that as we care for others, whether it's just by wearing a mask or it's in how we care for those who are in need as we bring food for the food pantry, as we reach out to those who are isolated and alone and bring them a phone call or a card or a note, that as we seek peace and wholeness for them, we know the fullness of God's peace and wholeness that's given to us. Surely I know the plans I have for you, God says. God from the beginning only desired wholeness and peace. And in the midst of this broken world, in the midst of our own exile, God still calls us to look to Christ, to look to the one who brought us that wholeness, who brings us that wholeness, that the Spirit is with us to bring us that wholeness. Now, where we are, no matter what the future may bring or what it will look like we know that god is there still desiring our welfare our peace our wholeness our shalom and it's for this that we do proclaim thanks be to god change and chance will guide me only good and only true. God, 
mortal pride and earthly glory. What with care and toil we fashion, tower and temple fall to dust. Great thy goodness, air enduring. Splendor, light, and life attend thee, beauty springing out of naught. As we believe and trust in our Lord who is with us always, we are bold to proclaim our faith as we use the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of God, and the life everlasting. Reminder for those who are online that you can list your prayers uh, there uh, and we will, we will lift them up uh, during the week as well and I'll be adding our fabric prayers uh, to our, our room. Woven together as your whole church, we lift our prayers before you, O oh Lord, for the church, the world, and all of God's creation. God of peace, you desire only the best for and in your people. May we be filled with the spirit of your grace, enabling us to live as people of peace in the world, in a world of injustice and violence. Bring your peace to rest upon us all, life-giving God. Amen. Gracious God, you formed us in your image and asked us to care for your whole creation. Bless those who till the ground and provide sustenance for others. Strengthen those who provide so many essential services that enable us to live. Life-giving God. Amen. God of the past, present, and future, you, tr you transcend time itself. Yet you entered into our time in Jesus to reveal your unending love and grace to us. Open our hearts and eyes to see your presence in all of our moments, particularly those that are difficult. Life-giving God. Amen. Amen. God of wholeness, people are hurting and struggling, and our hearts break. Bless the work of all those who take care of all who suffer in body, mind, and spirit. May they be held within the embrace of our prayers and strengthened by your healing and life-giving presence. We pray especially this day for. For those who have no one to name them, and for those who do not know Christ's name, Life-giving God, hear our prayer. Other petitions can be offered online, aloud or silently. We pray for Steve and for Alan. Be with them as they continue to recover, as the doctors seek to bring them healing and wholeness. In the face of our own uncertainties, we offer all these prayers before you, O Lord. For with you, nothing is impossible, as is revealed through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. 
Let us offer a sign of peace to one another, as well as to those who are online. Share the peace with those who are online. abide with us you provide for all our needs and guide us in your ways out of gratitude for your care we bring our gifts before you use them for your work of caring that all may feast at the table of abundance walk without fear and drink deeply from the cup of compassion given through Jesus Christ our Lord Amen. we pray together as our Lord taught us to pray our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name Thy kingdom come, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Are you seated? Just a few announcements to bring to your attention. Uh, as always, you can now also uh, put flowers on the altar. Please contact Kathy Ruse if you would like to do that. Uh, for those who put it on or, and are unable to uh, come, you can just make arrangements with me or the office to come and pick them up. Um, I'm here this morning until probably 11-ish or more. Um, so if you want to come uh, for that. For those who would also still like to receive communion, um, I'll be outside or inside and see you outside uh, to, and to, to offer communion to those who would like to drive through uh, following worship. Um, the council is going to, we're going to be doing a book read for uh, through the summer and into September, uh, a book called Dear Church, a love letter to, um, to the whitest denomination, uh, from a black preacher to the whitest denomination uh, in, the, in the United States. It's by Pastor Lenny Duncan, who is an ELCA pastor. Um, you can find it through Augsburg Fortress or through any online book sale, and I think it is also an e-book for those who would like to read that as well. Um, for, for the young people for, and for parents uh, who were, we've been doing planning, at least initially for the National Youth Gathering that was supposed to be next summer, but they have already, because of such a big event, it can't be canceled at a short notice, so we're putting it off till 2022. So we've got a lot more time to, to do fundraising and planning and hopefully things will calm down uh, and we'll be able to do that e more easily in 2022. So just a, just a note about that. Um, other announcements will come through uh, email as always. If you have things that you would have questions about or concerns, uh, please, uh, please let me know that, um, that um, or ideas for other things to do. I'm also looking at possibly doing a midweek service or maybe a Thursday noon service again, very short outdoor with communion. Uh, if someone is interested in that and would like to participate, let me know uh, so that we can, we can plan that. Um, if it's too hot, like it's been, probably won't happen because <laughs> I don't want people out in the heat. Um, but if you are interested in that, do let me know as well. Any other announcements that we know of? I invite you to stand. We will be having communion as you leave this morning. Uh, for those who haven't been here before, what will happen is um, while the last hymn is playing, I will leave uh, and go towards the door, and I will have um, the, the wafers and the tongue, place them, drop those in your hand uh, for communion. But we do remember that in the night in which he was betrayed, that our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be good to you. May the Lord fill you with peace, love, and much laughter. It may set you free to celebrate the life that God has given you in all its fullness. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. God.